Understanding Modern Portfolio Theory, Principles and Examples Modern Portfolio Theory, MPT, is a revolutionary approach to investment that was developed by Harry Markowitz in 1952. This approach, which won Markowitz the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1990, seeks to maximize returns for a given level of risk by carefully choosing the proportions of different assets in a portfolio. In this video, we'll delve into the fundamentals of modern portfolio theory, illustrate its principles with examples, and discuss its implications for investors. The Basics of Modern Portfolio Theory The underlying principle of MPT is that the market is efficient and, therefore, it is impossible to consistently achieve higher returns without accepting higher risk. According to MPT, the key to successful investing isn't picking individual securities but rather assembling a well-diversified portfolio. Diversification, in the context of MPT, isn't merely about spreading investments across different securities, it's about selecting securities that are not perfectly correlated. The goal is to include assets in the portfolio that move in different directions under similar market conditions. When some investments decline, others may rise, helping to offset potential losses. Investment returns and risks are often measured by expected returns and standard deviations, respectively. The expected return of a portfolio is the weighted average of the expected returns of the individual securities, with the weights corresponding to the proportion of each security in the portfolio. The risk, on the other hand, is not merely a weighted average. Due to the correlations between different securities, a well-diversified portfolio's overall risk could be less than the risk of its individual components. Examples of Modern Portfolio Theory To illustrate the application of MPT, let's consider two assets, stock A and stock B. Suppose that stock A has an expected annual return of 8% with a standard deviation of 15%, and stock B has an expected annual return of 12% with a standard deviation of 20%. According to traditional investment principles, an investor might favor stock B because of its higher expected return. However, MPT encourages investors to consider the potential benefit of diversification. If stocks A and B are not perfectly correlated, then a mix of these two stocks could have a higher expected return for a given level of risk than either stock individually. For example, if we construct a portfolio with 50% stock A and 50% stock B, and assuming the correlation coefficient between the two stocks is 0.5, we can calculate the portfolio's expected return and standard deviation risk. The expected return is simply the weighted average of the two stocks' returns, 0.5 multiplied by 8%, plus 0.5 multiplied by 12%, equals 10%. The portfolio's risk, however, requires a more complex calculation involving the weights, standard deviations, and correlation of the stocks. The resulting risk will be less than the weighted average of the individual securities' risks because of the benefit of diversification. The Efficient Frontier and the Capital Market Line The next step in MPT involves identifying the optimal mix of securities. By calculating the expected return and standard deviation of various combinations of securities, we can plot a graph known as the efficient frontier. This curve represents the combinations of securities that provide the maximum expected return for each level of risk. Portfolios on the efficient frontier are said to be efficient because they offer the highest possible expected return for their level of risk. The point where a straight line called the capital market line CML, which represents the risk-free rate, tangentially touches the efficient frontier is considered the market portfolio, representing the combination of all risky assets in the market. According to MPT, every investor's optimal portfolio lies somewhere on the CML, a combination of the risk-free asset and the market portfolio. The exact position on the CML depends on the investor's risk tolerance. Risk-averse investors will have a higher proportion of the risk-free asset, whereas risk-tolerant investors will have a higher proportion of the market portfolio. Limitations of Modern Portfolio Theory 
While MPT has profoundly influenced the field of financial economics, it is not without its critics. The theory makes several assumptions that may not hold in the real world. First, MPT assumes that investors are rational and avoid risk when possible, seeking to maximize their utility. However, behavioral economics research suggests that investors often act irrationally, influenced by biases and emotions. Second, MPT assumes that all investors have access to the same information and agree about the risks and expected returns of all securities, implying that all investors will hold the market portfolio. In reality, information asymmetry and differing opinions are common. Third, MPT assumes that asset returns are normally distributed. In practice, financial markets often experience black swan events, extreme incidents that are outside the standard expectations and can lead to significant financial loss. Lastly, MPT relies on historical returns and standard deviations as proxies for expected returns and risks. However, as any investment disclaimer will note, past performance is not indicative of future results. The financial markets are influenced by a broad range of unpredictable factors, and the true risks and returns of an asset may not be reflected in historical data. Despite these limitations, modern portfolio theory remains a foundational concept in finance. Its emphasis on diversification and its quantification of risk have helped guide the creation of many financial products and investment strategies. For individual investors, understanding MPT can provide valuable insights into how to manage risk and optimize returns. As always, investors should consider their personal risk tolerance, investment goals, and the advice of a trusted financial advisor when making investment decisions.